Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. On this week's roundtable, we got the usual suspects, minus a couple people, but no worries. We got the nightcap OG, sober as always, dude buddy, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good to see you. We've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Glad to see you. We've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how's Vegas treating you? It's good, man. A little bit chilly, but, uh, you know, sun's out, so everything's good. Are you a gambling man, Mr. Drebin? Every time I eat out. <laughs> One of my favorite lines from the Police Academy movie. And then last but not least, we've got Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything, investorninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? Great. I will be referring to you as either the brain the professor, or the flight school Sherpa, the rest of the podcast. With your permission, of course. As long as it's not, and Marianne, so that's good. No, of course. Okay, all right. So some some people are like, I don't get the joke. Well, Nobody gets that joke except for us. Get it at all. Yeah, Yeah, I I, 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 I had to like- Your age is showing, your age is showing, Scott. Yeah, because in fact, I was talking to my daughter today about, uh, I was asking her like, who is this? What is this? You know, like, wh- what is this? And I said to her, I said, like, wh- who is Gilligan? She's like, eh, he's a guy on a TV show. And I'm like, but what, what's the thing? Have you ever watched Gilligan's Island? And she's like, no. And then all of a sudden I, I give that reference because if you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to the theme song of Gilligan. And you'll see like Mark's introduction always reminds me of the theme to Gilligan's Island. Well, let's not go too off topic. Professor. So I want to talk about scaling your business. And we did talk about what it's like to scale your business um, a few podcasts ago and, and some of the things that we did uh, and how life is better now that we did scale our business. But in the beginning, it's not like flipping a switch. And I'd love to know what were your biggest fears about scaling your business, whether it was money, whether it was losing control, quality, maybe someone doing something that would be against the law, maybe stealing your passwords. And I'd just be curious what that was like in the beginning for you. So let's start with Mimi. Mimi, what were your biggest fears about scaling? Mine, my biggest fears were that I would make a mistake uh, that would cause me to lose money. And I had so much pushback from my family, from my husband and my mom. You know, like my mom said, why would you spend that money when you can use it to put your kids through college? Right? So um, I was... I was very concerned about losing the money and then getting the pushback from them. Well, we told you so. Right. And so now they're all on board, but that was a big deal for me. Um, And just that I wouldn't make it go. I really wanted to be successful at it. So I was just really afraid of failure. And, but the only way that I could get over it was to move forward and taking little steps and working through it. And still today, you know, just recently I, I've hired some people and I worry, am I going to see the results with all the money that I'm putting out to pay them? Right. And so I had all this anxiety the last couple of weeks and then I'm starting to get a lot more leads and a lot more sales. So I'm like, okay, it's going to work. It's going to be okay. But for me, every step is like that along the way. I'm just very anxious that way. I think, um, I feel a lot of anxiety and I take the steps and I work through it and realize it wasn't a big deal afterwards. Even last night on, um, Flight school office hours. Everyone, they were talking about how afraid they were to have a VA um, posting their Facebook ads. And I said, 
yes, I have a stranger in there. And yes, the money button, he can operate the money button in Messenger to collect down payments. They were all floored. And then I made the, the comment that, you know, that you guys have made too. Well, what's the VA going to do? Change your marital status, right? So uh, it's all about trying it and getting comfortable with it, I guess, working outside your comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, uh, Scott Bossman? Well, to echo, you know, what Mimi said a little bit, um, hiring your first VA to, to start scaling this business for me, that, that was the biggest, biggest fear ever. Like, okay, I don't even know what I'm doing or I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. And now, now I'm going to pass this off to somebody else. And then they come through with good results. Uh, and then that just makes you realize that, hey, I don't need to do everything okay, I don't need to be as anxious about this as I thought in bringing other people into the mix. They might even do it better than me. And, and look how much money I invested uh, in that person doing this task, which would have taken me hours. Uh, and and it, it cost me 10 bucks. Um, so, you know, there's this realization, I think that, um, uh, or there's there's fear when you outsource something that maybe maybe the quality isn't going to be the best or that type of thing. But But in the end, it ends up being a really great uh, uh, situation for you and your business because you've saved time and essentially you've saved money because your time is valuable. So there was just that uh, mental barrier for me when I first started bringing people into this, like, is this going to be worth it? Exactly like Mimi said. And then uh, it just gets easier and easier and easier. For, so for those of you out there who are like hesitant to hire your first person to, to, to come into your business and help you with something, just do it because the first one's the scariest, right? And then it just gets easier and easier and easier after that. It it really is. And it's just like anything in this business. You like Mimi said, you just don't know until you do it what the experience will be. And I I think it's that great Seneca quote that you know, fears of the imagination are much worse than what we actually experience. I'm paraphrasing but something like that. Tate Litchfield, how about for you? You know, I didn't really struggle with the fear of somebody messing up. Um, that, that wasn't really a big concern with me because I knew that most of the tasks that they were doing for me were low dollar, low risk tasks. You know, they, they might've messed up offer amounts. Well, if they do that, you lose 50 or $100 in bad offers. But in reality, the phone's still going to ring and you can probably turn that uh, those incorrect offers into a deal if you're good at negotiating. So that wasn't a big concern for me. But a concern that I see a lot of people have is they'll start hiring VAs and the VAs will be very, very productive and really, really good. And they won't be able to keep up with their VAs. So they'll think, oh, I just hired somebody and now I need to give them all this work and I don't have the money to do that or I don't have uh, enough inventory to keep having them sell for me or keep marketing for me. So I think that's a big concern that people have when it comes to scaling is not being able to keep up or having to run. And all, I mean, pretty much everybody we talk to gets into this business because A, they like the passive income and it sounds sexy to them, but they also probably want to leave their current position. Uh, in their day job. And when it comes time to executing on the steps that will make that a reality, people tend to get nervous. And I, I think it's common. I think it's, you know, normal, but I think there's this fear of success that comes with hiring these VAs. Like what happens if we do start selling all of these properties, then I'm a real land investor for, for life, you know, then I'm in it. And I think there's a little bit of fear that goes with that. So you know, don't, don't be afraid of it. These people are qualified. And I say it all the time. You don't have to be an expert at anything except hiring experts. And I really believe that to be true when it comes to VAs, the work that my team is doing is not rocket science. I, I love that quote. You don't have to be an expert at anything except hiring VAs. Yeah. Hiring expert VAs. I mean, it, hiring you, expert you can VAs. get on the phone. And that's just it, right? Like there's so many tips and tools, you know, Zapier, website development. These are things that I don't have a background in. I don't know. Do you have a background in it, Mark? I don't. But 
it doesn't matter, right? Like you can go out there, post an ad on Upwork or Fiverr or hire my mom and find somebody who is an expert at this. And they can do exactly what you want for relatively inexpensive. So that's, it's amazing. There's no better time to be an, you know, an entrepreneur or, or a land investor. And I think it's interesting that you brought up fear of success. And I think occasionally we do see that where somebody has that fear and then will unconsciously sabotage themselves, which is interesting. It's not logical, obviously. No, but, but if it does you happen. don't have, yeah, if you are not, if you're just culturally not surrounded by a bunch of people who are successful and you're breaking out of that group, you don't want to feel alone and you might unconsciously revert back to that group in the same way when I'm at boot camp and Mimi's eating clean and Zeno's eating clean and, you know, Bossman won't eat a carb and, you know, Scott's running out for Panera and, and Tate's passing on the cheesecake. I'm more likely to want to eat clean, but then the reverse would be true as well. If, if everyone is not doing that, I, I might want not want to feel like the outlier eating the salad. It is a thing. Scott Todd, the brain. How about you? What were your fears initially in scaling? So, um, here's the, here's the, I was sitting in my office one day and, um, I was, I was trying to figure out how I was going to pull the numbers together. So I bring this, this rolling whiteboard over to my desk and, um, sat there and I just started kind of to reverse engineer what it was going to take. So I said, okay, well, what's my passive income goal? So I wrote it up on the board and I'm like, okay. So what is my average note? So I looked at the average notes that I had at the time, what, you know, average of what everybody's paying me. And I divided the passive income by the average notes. And it said that I needed, uh, you know, 200 notes a, approximately to, to get the passive income that I wanted. So I'm like, okay, well, 200 notes times um, the $1,600, cause I was, I, I spent about $1,600 per property to buy. So, okay, I'm going to need $320,000 worth of capital. And right there, I was sick, right? Like right there, I talked myself out of the whole deal. And I'm like, $320,000, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Like, first of all, I don't have $320,000 to sink into the business at the time. And, you know, beyond that, like, where am I going to get $320,000? I don't want to loan. I, like all of the negativity in doing that exercise, like I thought it was gonna be a positive thing, right there, it was like derailed myself. And so I just I just kept going, right? Like, okay, well, I guess it's gonna take me a little bit longer than what I thought, so whatever, I'll just keep growing it. But then something crazy happened. What happened was uh, I started getting more down, higher down payments, right? Like I started asking different questions, like, hey, yeah, I'm asking you $100 down, but man, can you, can you put down $2,000? All of a sudden, guess what? I was able to get a note and then go buy another property with down payment from the notes, or I was able to go buy two properties from the down payments from the notes, right? So like, that's the one thing I didn't figure in is how much money am I gonna get on the down payment? Because it can become self-funding if you start to ask different questions. And then I'm thinking, well, man, if I can get higher down payments, can I get a higher monthly note average? Can, instead of doing, 175, can I get 200? Because now all of a sudden, the whole number system changes again, right? So that, and then something crazier happened. People started like uh, taking their notes or you know their, their properties, if, if you will, they'd stop paying on them after they spent thousands of dollars with me and they just walk away. And you're like, what gives man? Like this guy just walked away from a property where he invested $6,000. And like, that's it. Like, I don't have, to, he just literally walked away. He said, keep the property. And it happens more, more times than what you think. And all of a sudden now the property that I invested becomes free because people have paid it down and then they, they leave and the, the churn affects it. So you can't financial model this business the way that you think you are, or think you can, 
And ultimately that's, that was like my biggest struggle is like the first of all was getting my brain around the fact that I don't need a ton of money to do this business and it can be self-funding. And if you're not getting the numbers that you need, start asking different questions like, Hey, how do I get a higher down payment? Hey, how do I get a higher monthly payment? Because these are the things that will affect uh, what you're going to do. That's a really good point. I know when I first started because I didn't have flight school or coaching or anything like that. I got really good at everything because I kept doing it over and over and over again. And coming from a corporate job, I just thought, well, this is how I'm supposed to spend my time. I never even questioned it. I thought, well, this is just my new job. And it wasn't until I had Ori walk me through, you don't have a business. He said, do you want a business or do you want a job? Because you have a job. You like your job, but it's a job and you won't grow. You are going to plateau at what you're doing because you personally can only do so much. And I was really upset after that coffee with him because I thought, well, that's good and fine, but I'm not going to ever find anyone who can do county research as well as me. I mean, I completely lacked any humility at this point. I didn't think anyone could market as well as me. I didn't think anyone could sell as well as me. I certainly didn't think anyone cared about my business as much as me. And I fought this scaling thing tooth and nail, even though I had examples all around me of people doing it successfully in other businesses. And I had an investment banking background. It was all on me. It was just, you know, I had what Chris Tucker would call superhero syndrome. And then slowly, methodically, very, uh, you know, much with tons of anxiety, I started outsourcing every single piece of the business and then became completely free. So I had the best of both worlds. I had the money and I had the time. And then to utilize that time to continue to grow was really the best part of it. I think what would be an interesting topic next time is chicken and egg syndrome. What comes first? And when do you know it's time to hire that first VA? Because I can imagine someone listening to this saying, well, you guys might have started with more capital or something that if the cheapest person I can hire is myself, when do I let go of this task? And I think that would be an interesting discussion moving forward. What do you, what do you guys think? Yeah. Sure. Everyone, everyone's nodding their head for those of you listening. So I thought this was a really interesting topic. Is there any other final takeaways you, or final advice you'd want to give as far as managing your fears of getting started and scaling and hiring that first VA? What do you think, uh, Mimi? Nope. The sooner you do it, the sooner you feel the relief. About it. Really? It's really it. It's like a human opioid. It's so great. As soon as you take it, the pain goes away. However, unlike an opioid, well, it could be addictive, isn't it? VAs are definitely addictive. They are addictive. You just, you just start to like, I don't know, multiply your time. And we say it all the time, like you're going to 10X your business. Well, this is the only way to really do that. And it's by 10Xing your time, by 10Xing you. Uh, I remember thinking, oh, if I could just clone myself and make a duplicate of me. And, and I wasn't able to create, you know, a duplicate Tate Litchfield, but I was able to create, you know, 10 people who have, the ability to do certain things really, really well. And now I've got, you know, I don't know what the ratio is, but I've got a whole team of people that are 
basically doing what I was doing. And now I can do whatever I want, like watch the Mandalorian and see how cute baby Yoda is, you know, it's time well spent. Well, now that you brought up the baby Yoda and Mandalorian, Scott Bossman, any final thoughts? Is he baby Yoda? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're getting at? I think someone's becoming a, a Star Wars fan here. Tate, you never know, used to talk about Star Wars. Now you're all about it. The show. And I'm loving it. I, Disney Plus, man, it's got me kind of re, re-energized on all of it. I've watched every <laughs> single Star Wars, you know, movie over the last three weeks. I guess that's the downside of having too much free time and a broken leg is you're really limited as to where you go. So Star Wars has taken up a lot of my attention lately. There you go. I guess what I would say to people is, uh, you know, one of the reasons we do this business is for money, but the, the, a, a major reason that so many of us do this is for time. So uh, you need to approach your business in that regard. Uh, you need to hire people that are going to save your time and scale your time. And it all starts with that first one. So if you're on the fence, uh, you need to just, uh, just do it. Take, take the most mundane task if you want. The thing that that's mundane, but but uh, painful and causing you a lot of time, and create one training video and 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 get a couple people on it, and your life's going to become that much easier. Uh, and and then you just continue down the down the down the chain. Yeah, I agree because the temporary pain of going through the process of hiring somebody, training them, and getting them going is temporary, but the time that you save now is permanent. Then the passive income that you continue to grow is permanent, but you do have to go through that initial piece of being uncomfortable, being anxious, you know, putting, exerting some energy and some forethought into doing this, but it's a one time process and boy, does that scale. And we'll talk about those, those points of leverage in another podcast. Uh, Scott Todd. I'm sorry. Did I call you Scott Todd? Brain professor. <laughs> Sherpa. Well, look, here, here's the deal. Here's what I would say is, uh, look, if we can do it, you can do it. Like that's, that's the thing is like, I know, I know what I did to do this business and I know what other people have, what it's taken for other people to do this business. And I've got to tell you something like if you're, if you're, finding, you know, difficulty with it, well, then you got to look inside, right? Like, because it just, it, this business is not complicated. What this business requires is it requires some work. It requires some stamina. It re- requires you to knock down some walls, which are facing you. And then once you do, you can have it because if all the people on this call and all the people that we see succeed can do it, there's no reason you can't. So stop letting your, that voice in your head tell you that it's not for you. It's wrong. You can have it too. And uh, go go get what you want. Go create the life that you want. Well, I thought this was a really interesting and informative and valuable podcast. And before we get to the tip of the week, I'd just like to remind everybody that if you are getting value, the best compliment that you could give us is certainly subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're gonna send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the new wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. If you really want to accelerate your success going into 2020, learn the DHR method of flight school. Have Scott Todd take you up that mountain of land investing quickly, safely, efficiently. Then you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. You've got to schedule a call with the Nightcap OG, Scott Bossman, or the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, at thelandgeek.com forward slash training and learn more about that. All right. Mimi Schmidt, what is the tip of the week? <laughs> oh, me on mute. The tip. Okay, you're still on mute, Mimi. Mimi has a cold, Sorry. so she might be 
a little medicated. The, it's the cold medicine making me dopey. The tip of the week is www.titlesearchcourse.com. So I'm having my intake manager take this course, not because I want to pay her to do title search. Uh, for, for me, it's just really training so that when she gets title search back on properties, she can actually give it the whale eye and have some idea if it, if it looks good or not. You know what I mean? So she can say, okay, she can look at what the title history that the title researcher sent back and say, okay, this looks right. You know, the, the title searcher will usually give the whole, it's clear, it's not clear, but their mistakes happen too. I want her to have a little more idea, a little better idea of what title searches are about. So it's only $69. Titlesearchcourse.com? Yep. It's for law firm employees, entrepreneurs, investors, and foreclosure processors. So I'm sending her. Huh. Wait, did I spell it wrong? I must have spelled it wrong. Hold on. www.titlesearchcourse.com. So for 69 bucks, it'll just give her a little bit better idea of what she's looking at. You know, when she gets an intake call, when she calls someone and she's talking with them, she'll be able to form a little better idea if um, a deal is worth doing or not. That's a great tip. 69 bucks. Wow. That's phenomenal. So, I mean, Scott Todd spends more on that at a Cuban restaurant. Well, so. listen, as, as long as you didn't claim I spent more than that at Panera Bread like Scott Bossman does, like that's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's fair. That's a good tip. It's good. That's good. Well, all right. Fantastic. I want to thank the listeners. And if you have not signed up for boot camp yet, please do that. Just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp. As of this recording, we are 30 days out, January 10th through 12th. San Antonio, we'll all be there. Yeehaw. We're going to say y'all. We're going to bring cowboy boots. Zeno's going to bring his cowboy hat. It is going to be phenomenal. But two and a half days of land investing immersion, it will move the needle for all of you, I promise. So please do that. If you don't have your two free tickets from the toolkit, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash foundational training, or again, schedule a call with uh, Mike and Scott, get into flight school, two free tickets come along to boot camp with flight school as well as the investors toolkit. All right. Are we, are we ready to do this? One, two, three, let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. I think that might be the best Did one it? ever. I, I don't. I think <laughs> Mimi disagrees. I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. Maybe on two and a half times speed. If yes. you're to it. I agree yeah. with you. I don't know. All right. Well, thanks everybody, and um, we'll see everyone next week. I, I just would love to know what Tate is having for lunch. No, it's, it's, it's quarter to 12 today. there. Yeah, it's, it's time. I don't know what, what we're going to do. So I have to get back to you. No, no Thai food. Not today. No, I don't know. I I'm about to errands, end my so. fast. <gasps> the, How many are you, are you doing the 16, eight fast? I do the 16-8. Have you seen all the evidence this month about how good intermittent fasting is for you? No. No. Lowers no. your blood pressure. Shockingly, lowers none your of cholesterol. that has... Wow. What? Wait, <laughs> it lowers your blood pressure, lowers your cholesterol. What else? Yeah, there's just, there's just all this... Uh, there's uh, less, there less blood sugar problems. There's just... This evidence is coming out. So I think wow. uh, it, it's going to be a great solution for people for weight loss, for health. So Tate... Scott, get on the intermittent fasting train. It's good for you. I do that. No, it's called you. the twelve twelve. <laughs> Actually, they said ten fourteen is good. Really? Even if you did ten fourteen. I do twelve twelve. Uh, I do twelve twelve. Close <laughs> enough to it. That's pretty you don't good. Don't go into ketoacidosis then, though. You Does gotta go into ketoacidosis. Even, so you don't even drink coffee in the morning, or can is that just food? 
you can have non-caloric uh, drinks. So coffee and tea are fine. So without, I can't put the eggnog in the coffee for breakfast. Right. Oh. <laughs> That's a no-go. No sweet tea. No can do. I, I've been doing it and, um, and I'm pretty rigid about it. And then the other morning, my wife came home with our Starbucks and she bought the peppermint brownie pop cakes. Oh. And I had that decision to make, which is more important. And man, did I enjoy that pop cake. <laughs> Uh, and the the peppermint melts with the hot coffee too it is oh, so a really oh nice God. pair Sounds so good. i uh i just spent more time on the peloton to make it. i don't i don't know of this pop cake thing that you're talking about what, what are we talking about here the i think this is like something a little like, yeah it's like a little lollipop but it's a cake on a oh, stick right i've seen those why is it so small yeah, that's a lot. I, I just googled it, man. Like, that's they, a they lot of tiny. Cake. It's a nice bite, but you don't. You're not investing that, in all those calories. That's but a lot so of good. calories for a little bite, man. <laughs> I think yeah. I want. If it's that good, I want a full slice of cake. Like I don't want a little sample. <laughs> that's like something you get at Costco. These are tiny. That's not going to work. Not going to satisfy I mean, me. This. This thing I'm looking at here, it looks like it's a donut hole, but like yeah. five times the calories, three times the calories, three times the calories of a donut hole. Well, I, it's not I, frosting on what? it. It's like the cake and frosting. Yeah, Come on, I think Mark. You can, you can choose calories better than this. I think if we're going to start talking about donuts, Scott Todd, I think 2020 is the year of kale for you. No, and we're, listen, we're getting rid of the donut. We're every getting morning, rid of the daily donut. Daily? I'm treating myself. Don't and every morning, I treat myself to that daily donut. No, I already do it. I, I'm not going to kale. Forget that. Donuts I'm not, are fat pills. A donut is just a fat pill. What listen, that? as long as donut the weight remains the same, all is good. I agree with you, Scott. <laughs> I mean, you know. Don't succumb to this peer Don't, pressure. I Tate, you and I will be going to our donut shop. Yeah. In 2020. A, Don't you worry. I feel great about eating them every day. In fact, I yeah. wake up and I go, hmm, maple bacon bar today or just maple bar today? Like that's that's one of the hardest decisions I have to make. So Wow. Well, Tate, we'll see how you feel when you hit your forties. Which yeah. I don't it's a long ways away from me. That's I know it's annoyingly long. <laughs> you know, you know. Mark, I, you I, I used to be 60s like you. before he hits his forties. I don't know. It might start to catch up with you with your broken yeah. foot and not being able to exercise all the time. Yeah, potentially, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. I live in Vegas, living on the edge. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you yeah, can't just, even go outside your house without getting hit by a car. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not like you even have like a dog you can walk, right? You got those slow tortoises. <laughs> they're hibernating. They're they, they've hibernating. gone. They've gone to sleep already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I might catch up with you. I don't know. I think sure Scott Bossman and I are going to stay accountability partners with intermittent fasting, while the two of you become your donut partners and discuss oh did we have sprinkles today or was it a glaze <laughs> I, I can just see what what the what your accountability will be hey you didn't eat today did you no not yet okay good deal tate and i are like what are we eating next man <laughs> yes <laughs> no. we're hey, eating lunch you before you guys can even eat for the day breakfast and lunch it's you're missing out sometimes we yeah go you know what early so that I can get an afternoon lunch in too, Mark. Uh, oh my gosh, is this this is like a Lord of the Rings thing? You're a Hobbit. Yeah, that's like yeah. Hobbit stuff going you know, there. The I don't know. Maybe you're not you're not a big breakfast person, are you? Uh, no, I'm very regimented. 
in, in what I eat for usually breakfast and lunch. And then I kind of give myself free reign for dinner and weekends. But you know, it's like oatmeal, fruit, yogurt, coffee every day. I'll do it for years and years and years. Okay, Tate, look, here's the deal. Boring. At the next Vegas boot camp, we're going to go to that Caesar's buffet for oh, breakfast. Oh, yeah. Okay, for hey, breakfast. That's a great idea. Yeah, and that will be our big meal for the day, and we're going to mess up their intermittent fasting. For like, I'm just going to fast the entire day before. We're fine. You're going to have food coma yeah. all day long. No. Scott, here's what we do. <laughs> we get the buffet pass. It's good for yeah. 24 hours oh and we can go God. to as many of these. There's like three or four buffets that are, that are on the list and you can go there as long as you want, as many times as you want. So we get it the night before we go to dinner. We get up early in the next morning. We go to breakfast. We get two buffets out of it. You know, I agree. I agree with you. We should all do it. We just have to wait 10 hours in between. Right, Scott? I I'm up. I'm game. I can pack a lot into eight to 10 hours. A lot of eating in there. But you got to keep the calories the same. Like you can't, you, it's all about the calories. You can't like, oh, I'm in my 10 hour window. I'm going to eat unlimited amounts of food. It's about the calories. So what does it matter if the calories are spread out throughout the day? Like even Dr. Oz will tell you that. So what doctors behind this intermittent fasting thing? Dr. At least this doctor's on TV. I'll send you some literature. That's uh, okay. I, I want to see it. Come from I, I won't have time to read it because I'll be eating. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like these days there's more man diets than there are women diets. And in decades past, there were all, you know, more diets that were tuned to women. Now you've got like the all, what's the all meat diet? Just eat like a caveman. What was that called? That was Alio. Paleo, right? There's just a lot more guys do that. It's like their system, it's better for their systems, you know? And this one too, this one's, I think different things work better for different people. No, I agree, actually. I think for women, intermittent fasting is different. Is that right, Scott? Intermittent fasting is, is different, yes. As far as Sorry, what was your question? As far as the, it's for the genders, I think for like for men, oh, it's a little it's bit better yeah. than for women. Yeah. That, that's the, yes, there, there's some, <clears throat> there's some, uh, there's some evidence showing it's uh, more effective for men than women. Yeah. Lots of, lots of work in that area, dieting for men. Yeah. I, uh, I just listened to that Peter Tia podcast have you guys heard about him he's on the tim ferris podcast a lot he's a super extreme guy and he he'll do a seven day fast every quarter and yet he couldn't tell you the efficacy of it so there's no really good sort of at least according to him good literature about the dose of how much you should or shouldn't fast but maybe Scott's got the answer with the 16-8. Maybe that's what it sure says. More and more stuff coming out all the time. It's yeah. good for you. Can you imagine being at a, a conference with that guy on his fifth day of the fast? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I couldn't. The low blood sugar headaches. I couldn't. No. Uh -uh. I mean, I'm looking at Tate. He can barely go another minute of this podcast. Like you can just see the hangerness coming on. Well, it's three minutes till 12 and, and uh, I'm not, I'm not here at 12.01 Tate's time. I'm ducking. You better wrap this up and sign us off because it's lunchtime, Mark. All right. Thanks guys. We'll see everybody. Well, we'll see you two at Krispy Kreme and uh, Mimi. Yeah. Yeah. You enjoy your salads. <laughs> Scott, I'm, I'm going to break my fast with a nice salad. And uh, extra olive oil. What are you going to do? Nice. Uh, we made homemade chicken little soup last night. So that, that's yeah. what I'm having. Leftovers. All right. Did you say break your fast with a salad? I mean, <laughs> you might as well just keep fasting, Mark. Like that doesn't even count. 
<laughs> what what is this language? I'm gonna break my fast. I should say that every morning for my first meal. I'm breaking my fast. <laughs> that's called well, breakfast. That's, that's Break where fast. breakfast comes from. Okay, great. But I a salad all is not <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> this is such a salad is not thing. breakfast. This is such a Florida man response. Oh, that's funny. Look, I don't I don't eat gator. Okay. <laughs> oh man. I mean. Dog okay, it. Mark, go enjoy your breakfast. I mean, your breakfast. <laughs> I I will. I Let will. us know how that kale tastes. But All remember, right. remember. See you guys. See ya. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs>